this morning. You can have a seat. We're going to show you a video right now. So watch this. Praise God for what he's done in 2022. Very excited about that. I know uh, people are still coming in, which is fantastic. If you are here for the very first time, we thank you for visiting with us at Crossroads. Out of all the churches in the area, we counted it a privilege that you would come and worship with us. If you haven't done so yet, please swing by our Welcome Center. Pick up one of these gift bags. It's our gift to you this morning. Uh, they just told me just for this service this morning, the 11 o'clock service, so far they've had six families that have been first-time guests. So let's give a hand to all of our visiting families that are here this morning. Thank you for being with us. And then last Sunday, which was amazing, last Sunday was January the 1st, our first Sunday of the year, and it was a holiday. Uh, but last Sunday on January 1st, we had 13 families visit us for the first time at Crossroads, which was absolutely amazing. So we are very thankful about uh, what God is doing here at Crossroad, what God has already done. We showed you the recap video for 2022, and we wanted to talk to you a little bit about 2023. So this service is a little bit different than what we normally do. We kicked off with some music. I'm going to speak for about 10 minutes, and then we'll turn it back to the worship team, and then we'll get into the message. So a little different format today. When you came in today, you should have received a handout that looks like this. If you can go ahead and get that out. And it says, looking forward to 2023. And I want to cover some stuff that's on here with you this morning about what we have planned. And again, this is just a glimpse. These are just some of the highlights. We still have our ministries that go on every day at Crossroads, as well as on a weekly basis, monthly basis, whether it's kids ministries, youth ministries, adult ministries, etc., but on top of everything that goes on on a regular basis at Crossroads, we do have other events that take place, and then some of these that are listed on here today. We could not put together everything on this handout. So this is kind of the highlights for us to be looking forward to in 2023. We have a fantastic church. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Amen. And we are so blessed because of you also, those of you that volunteer, we have awesome volunteers, and we have an incredible staff of employees here at Crossroads. I don't think we've ever done this before, at least in all the years I've been here, but we've never really showed you kind of a listing of all the employees here at Crossroads. So we wanted to do that for you just for a moment, pull up our website, show you the list of all the employees here at Crossroads. Currently, we have two pastors, myself, along with Pastor Clayton. We have six directors. We have Cody, who heads out our outreach and discipleship. We have Brianna and Linda that head up our children's ministries. We have, Co we have Colin that heads up our technology, our tech. And then we have the guy that heads up the coffee house that makes all those great drinks for you. His name is DJ. I probably should have given everybody else that kind of introduction, huh? And then we have our, our incredible support staff. We have uh, Vicki Allen, we have Tracy Nipper, we have Mindy Smith, we have Ashley Parker, and then we also have those individuals that beautify our property inside, outside. They do an incredible job. We have Frankie, we have Keisha, we have Kathy, and we have Cody. So let's give a hand to our incredible staff here at Crossroads. 
And our leadership team at Crossroads, the pastors and directors, have been working hard over the last few months. We wanted to put together a, a plan of, as far as what we wanted to see God accomplish in our church in 2023. We didn't want to be complacent. We didn't want to just wing it. We wanted to be proactive. So months of planning happened, and the pastors and directors did a presentation, a visual as well as an oral presentation to the rest of the staff and the deacons as far as what they would want to see accomplished. And I've taken some of what they presented and put it on your handout today, and I'm very excited. What we said was this, essentially, we said, hey, we want to make sure first and foremost that we are focusing on three things above all else. Number one, we're focusing on evangelism. Do you think it's important that we share the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen. Number one, first and foremost, that's what we should be doing. And then number two, we said we want to focus on discipleship. We want to make sure not only are we sharing the gospel and giving people an opportunity to be saved, but we also want to allow them and show them how they can take the next step of growth in their life. Do you think discipleship is important? Of course. And then number three, we said we want to focus on leadership development and training. We want to take those individuals that, again, want to go beyond that and equip them and train them as leaders for God, not just in the church, but outside the church. We said we want to do that across the board. It doesn't matter if it's the kids ministry, the youth ministry, the single adult ministry, the adult ministry, the senior adult ministry. We want to evangelize, discipleship, and train leaders. Amen? Amen. That's what we want to do. Why do we want to do that? Because that's what Jesus did. <laughs> if you read about Jesus, what three things did Jesus focus on more than anything? Evangelism, discipleship, and leadership development and training. If it was good enough for Jesus, is it good enough for us? <laughs> yeah. So that's what we wanted to do. And we said anything that we do beyond that is just going to be icing on the cake. So basically what you have on the handout today is the icing on the cake. But some of those things that we talked about, evangelism, discipleship, and leadership training, you'll see a little bit of that on the handout today. What's on the handout today more so is something that is more, more church-wide than anything else. But uh, anyway, I'm very excited and proud of our leadership team here at Crossroads. Like I said, the effort that they put into this, not to be complacent, not to just wing it throughout the year, but actually have a strategic plan for what they want to see God do in 2023. And again, this is not a complete list. We still have many other things that, that in addition to this, that will be happening. But I want to run through some of this with you. So if you can look at it with me, I'm very excited. First of all, starting in January, the focus, we're kicking off the year with the most important thing, and that's evangelism. So we're going to offer something that we haven't done in a long time, and you'll see a lot of new things on here and also things we haven't done in a long time that we're bringing back that we're excited about. We're going to have a class specifically for you, and it's a class on evangelism and apologetics. Essentially, it's a class that will help us to better share as well as defend our faith. How many of you think that, hey, I could use a little bit of extra training on how to share and defend my faith? Amen. All of us can. This is a class that will help us in that very first area that we want to focus on, and that's evangelism. If you do this, if you could do this just for a moment, turn your hand out over to the other side. And there's something on there that's titled The Truth Project. That is the name of that class that we're going to start offering. It kicks off in just a couple of weeks, January 22nd. It's a 12-week class. If you miss a class here and there, it's okay if you don't make it to all 12 of them, but it will be on Sundays at 5 p.m. Again, it will be a class that will be very specific in helping us to learn how to better share and defend our faith. If that's something that you would like to get involved in, just fill out the bottom of that handout, tear it off, and on your way out, drop it in one of the boxes, either in the Connection Center, or we also have a couple boxes if you exit out these doors here. So that will be kicking off. If you flip back over to the calendar, we also in the month of January are going to be focusing on ministering to the homeless. Now, again, that's something very biblical. The Bible encourages us to do this very thing. We have some leaders already that are in place 
that are heading up this ministry. We're going to share more about this ministry with you next week. And if that's something that you feel impressed upon your heart to get involved in, we'll give you an opportunity to do that next week. So in the month of February, we're also going to do something that we've done in the past, which is a Super Bowl of Caring, in addition to offering a sign language class. So if you're learning, if you would like to learn how to better minister to the deaf and hard of hearing, we'll have an opportunity for you to learn sign language. And then the third thing listed on there is something new that we haven't done before, at least in this fashion. It's called a Ministry Apprentice Program. And it's somewhat of a relaunch of our Bible Institute. Many of you probably are familiar that, familiar that we've had a Bible Institute in the past that we discontinued. We had it for about 10 years. We had dozens and dozens and dozens of people graduate from the Bible Institute. So again, this is kind of the preliminary stage to bring it back. We want to be able to offer it to individuals in our church, outside of our church, that feel led by the Lord to get involved either in serving the Lord full-time in vocational ministry or bivocational. They still want to keep a job, so to speak, outside of the church, but they want to come and work in the ministry part-time. So I'm very excited about that's going to take place uh, starting in February. If you're interested in that, see me. If not, I'll send out an email to the church where we get a little bit closer with more details. In the month of March, we're going to have something called Friend Day, and it'll be an opportunity for you to invite someone to church. The gospel of Christ will be presented. It will be an incredible time. We'll have some special things planned during that service. Also, a special gift for your friend that comes to church that day. We also will have our teen spring camp for our teenagers. It's at a brand new location this year, so I know they're very excited about that. In the month of April, another brand new thing that we're doing, something that we've never done before. Usually around Christmas time, we focus on the birth of Jesus Christ, right? But uh, during Easter, around Easter, we focus on his death and on his resurrection. Well, this year, we're going to do a brand new outreach event focusing on his death and resurrection. It's called Journey to the Cross. And I'm very excited about this. We already have some staff members, some of our directors in place that are putting the pieces together for us to be able to launch this brand new outreach to our community. So I'm super excited about it. But we'll need participation. We'll need people. We'll need you to participate in this incredible outreach event that we're doing for the very first time. In addition to that, as we look further to the month of May, we have, of course, Mother's Day, so we want the focus to be on ladies that month in particular. We're doing a fundraiser for the Crisis Pregnancy Center here locally. We also have a ladies church-wide event that is being planned right now for the month of May. And we also want to show our appreciation that month to all of our teachers and nurses. In the month of June, we are hosting a men's conference. And this is, again, something that we haven't done in many years as far as putting together a conference at our church where we'll have speakers, et cetera, et cetera. Again, we already have someone that's in place that's organizing this and putting it together. So I'm super excited that our men will have an opportunity to attend this conference here locally in 2023. In addition to that, in the month of June, we're going to have something called Impact Daytona. And this is something unique. This is something new we haven't done before. You know, the Bible encourages us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And we want to be an example to our community. And we want to show them that we at Crossroads, we're doers of the word. You know, we can't always expect people to come to us. So we need to go to them. So that month will be called Impact Daytona, in which we will participate as a church in various projects in our community to impact them for Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Very much looking forward to Impact Daytona. In the month of July, we'll have our kids' vacation Bible school. We'll also have our teen summer camp. Our VBS this year was a one-day event, or last year. They're playing in the same thing again, but they actually had one of the highest attendance um, number of kids to come for this year's VBS. We also have our teen summer camp that's planned. We also want to show in the month of July appreciation to all of our firefighters and police. We also are going to be offering a spiritual gift class for those that are interested in learning what your spiritual gift is and how you can better serve the Lord. We're going to offer a class in the month of July. 
in the month of August, again, we're going to be doing something that we haven't done in a long time. You know, we have committed to have a greater emphasis on missions in our church. We want to bring in speakers to speak to you that are missionaries that we support, and if the, in the very least, have them give you a presentation of what's going on in their ministry, whether it's in person or whether it's by video. We want to do that throughout the year. But one thing that we want to do is just have one month that that's going to be our emphasis. We want to solely focus on missions in our church, and that's going to be taking place during the month of August. And also in the month of August, we have our back to school blessings event in which we're a blessing to the local teachers here in various schools in our area. That was tremendous. We had such a huge, tremendous response. And you saw a little glimpse of that in the video for 2022. In the month of September, in addition to us having a men's conference in June, we also have ladies right now that are planning our first women's conference we haven't had one of these again in many years, but we have ladies that are putting the pieces together right now for us to have a women's conference in our church in the month of September, as well as us having our annual beach baptism events. And uh, the beach baptism was incredible last year as it has been in previous years. Now, we're still going to do baptisms throughout the year, not just at the beach baptism event. We like doing it at the beach because, again, people really, that's their preference, so we want to be open to having that event at least once a year. And the water is warmer in September <laughs> than it is in, like, if anybody wants to get baptized this month, guess what? At the beach, you're on your own. Because I was at the beach yesterday just for a quick walk on the beach, and that water is still pretty cold. <laughs> I'm not so sure I want to get in and do any baptisms there. But uh, any other time during the year, we'll do baptisms right back there. We have a baptismal for individuals that have trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior, and they would like to visibly show everyone in the church what God has done in their heart. And then in the month of October, we're doing an event once again. This was a new, unique event that no other church that I'm aware of does in the United States and abroad. We created this event. It's called the Crossroads Candy Maze, and we have had up to 3,000 people in our community come to this three-hour event at our church, uh, which has been incredible. And again, we're planning on doing that again because of the incredible response that we've had. We also have an opportunity where we give uh, them the gospel of Jesus Christ in some way. And in the month of November, we once again want to do a Thanksgiving type of ministry like we did last year, where we want to be a blessing to families in need. Many of you were totally 100% behind that and supported us in that endeavor. That was a huge success, so thank you for that. And then last but not least, in the month of December, it will be the 20th anniversary of something that we started back in the year. Oh, there you get the slide up there. It'll be our 20th anniversary of Walk Through Bethlehem. So we will be celebrating 20 years, and the way that we're going to celebrate it is we're going to try to bring it back this year at Crossroads. But in order for us to do that, we need your help. We need your support. It takes a lot of people to do that ministry, but this is perhaps the most impactful ministry that we've ever done at Crossroads. And we want to do it again this year as we celebrate 20 years of Walk Through Bethlehem. And we need your participation. We need your support. We need your service. We're only going to do it for one week instead of two weeks just to kind of get back in the groove. So we'll probably do it for four or five days total consecutively. But we need your participation. I know it's only January. <laughs> and most people don't plan for December at this point in time, much less next week or next month. But how many of you right now would say, hey, I know it's in December but my heart's to want to serve in some capacity that week during Walk Through Bethlehem so our church can do this and impact our community. Amen. Amen. We will need those same amount of hands raised when we ask you again a little bit closer. So we're super excited about bringing that back. In addition to that, on your handout, we're going to talk about some upcoming new ministries, not just special events that we're doing throughout the year. We're very excited. We have a new ministry for young adults. Basically, it's single adults that are from age 18 to 29. We're actually kicking that off this month, two weeks from today, January 22nd. We're having a single adults fellowship breakfast. Church is providing free breakfast to all single adults age 18 
to 29 in our gymnasium. So if that's you or if you know of a single adult in that age range, invite them to come. That is essentially our kickoff of our young adult ministry, which will be followed by um, a group that will be meeting as well. Again, we already have some leaders that are in place that have showed interest to help to get that kicked off, and we're very excited about that. We're also going to have on your list, it says, a new ministry for married couples. And essentially, it'll be a marital care ministry. And again, we already have a couple in our church, volunteers, that are going to be heading this up. They already have a timetable set as far as the planning and preparation for this. And we want to try, we're shooting at a target date of June to launch this new ministry. And again, it's for marital couples. Your handout kind of explains the three areas of focus. But if it's a couple, for instance, that's married and they're really struggling with some issues in their marriage and they need help, this ministry will be an extension of our counseling ministry that will primarily focus on helping married couples. Very thankful for them and their willingness to do this. The third thing that's listed on there is a new ministry to help people with overcoming strongholds in their life. We know that's difficult. People have certain addictions that they need help with. But we want to do something different in our church and something unique. We don't necessarily want to copycat what other churches are doing. If certain churches are doing a certain program and they're doing a great job and there's multiple churches in our area that are doing it, we don't want to do the same thing. So we're in the process now of looking at two different organizations, one of them that we're very familiar with as far as launching a ministry to help people overcoming strongholds uh, later this year in 2023. And then last but not least, we have a new ministry for widows and orphans. In the Bible, it's very specific when it says that true religion, can, true ministry consists of ministering to widows and orphans. Do you think that's important? It's got to be important because the Bible says it's important. So we want to do a better job with that. We have somebody in our church right now that's putting together a ministry specifically for widows. So we're encouraged by that. And then we're also doing some research as far as how we can better help and support orphans and foster families. So we're in the process of that right now. So, you know, I'm, are y'all excited about what we have planned for 2023? <laughs> I mean, this is incredible. Again, this is just a list. And again, this was a cooperative effort by myself, Pastor Rich, Pastor Clayton, our directors. You know, they've all had a hand in this. And it's, it's super excited about what we are expecting God to do in 2023. Man, if, there, if you're looking at this list and there isn't anything on this list that lights your fire, then all I got to say is your wood's wet. Because <laughs> there's got to be something on here that lights your fire. For me, it's everything on the list. I mean, I'm looking at this list, and this is like a glimpse, a glimpse of what we're expecting God to do in 2023. And I'm like, man, this is incredible. So again, I am so proud of our, our, our pastors, our directors, um, our staff, our volunteers, our leaders that enable us to do what we have done, but also what we're expecting God to do this year. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your generosity and your giving. Those of you that give, that have given to help us to be able to do what we do, not just here locally, but help to do what we do outside of the church. It's awesome. If you haven't given yet to Crossroads and you are supportive of this ministry and you consider this to be your church, man, I encourage you to give to the work that God is doing here. There's three different ways you can give, and I'm just going to mention this today. We usually don't mention this at all during the service, but if you haven't given yet and you want to give, this is your church. You support what God's doing here. You can either give online, go to our website, crbible.com. You can give through the envelope system in the seat in front of you, also at the racks here that are off to the side, and also in the Connection Center, you can give by cash or check, and then you can also give through text messaging. So three ways you can give. But regardless, we thank you, and we thoroughly encourage you in some way, shape, or form to participate in what God's going to do at Crossroads in 2023. Amen? Amen. I'm so excited. All right. Would you all stand with me? We're going to pray, and then we're going to turn it back over to our worship team, and then over to Brother Robbie for a message 
from God's word. Very excited. I got to hear everything already in the first service. You are in for a treat uh, today. And uh, there will be some acrobatics involved just to give you a little <laughs> heads up. All right, let's pray. Lord, we are so thankful for you and the difference that you've made in our life. Uh, Lord, we are where we are today because of evangelism. Somebody shared the gospel with us. Lord, we are where we are today because of discipleship, because somebody was willing to take time to help us to grow. Lord, we are where we are today because of leadership development and training. So, Lord, may we have a heart for others to do what you've done for us. We're so excited about what's being planned for this year. And, Lord, we are just opening the door and inviting you in to do what you can do in hearts and lives in our church. Lord, thank you for the almost 30 people that trusted you as Savior during our Christmas services. And, Lord, we look for you to continue to do great and mighty things here at Crossroads in 2023. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. All things are passed away, but your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. Things that we thought were dead are breathing in life again, and you cause your sun to shine on darkest nights for all.
Jesus, we praise you. We're so thankful that you're a God that's deserving of our praise, Lord. No matter what the day is, no matter what the day holds, Lord, we know that you, you hold the day. And we're just so thankful that we get to be blessed, that you can be a part of our lives, Lord. We just invite you into this service and we just want to remember these words that we've been singing, Lord, and just truly mean them and sing them to you and you alone. So as we go into this message from Robbie, I just pray that we can keep our, uh, keep our minds open and just ready to receive whatever you have to say through him, Lord. In your name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. Um, if you could, um, if you have a Bible or your phone app, uh, open or scroll or whatever uh, to 1 Timothy 4 and 2 Peter chapter 2. 1 Timothy 4, 2 Peter chapter number 2. Good morning. Good morning. I think this, this crowd is definitely a more lively crowd. Maybe that's because you guys get to sleep in a little bit more. But, um, you know, we just sang this song uh, before um, our devotion, our affection, our devotion poured out on the feet of who? Jesus. And then we go right into that line of uh, Jesus, we what? Jesus, we what? We love you right? Um, if someone only says, I love you, but doesn't demonstrate it, do they love you? I don't think so. That's not the kind of love I want to receive. Because if that's what it is, then, and that's all you do, you're a liar. I don't feel love. I don't see any love demonstrated. So therefore, love is in action, Right? It's, it's one thing to, to sing that or to say that. It's another thing wholly to do it. Right? Amen. Right. Jesus said to Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Okay. Feed my... What, what did he say? Feed. That's an action. You had to do something. That's how you demonstrate. Peter, how you're going to demonstrate... When I leave, I'm no longer present with you. How you're going to demonstrate your love for me, you're going, to give it, you're going to give something away to other people. 1992, I was around. Yes, I was. Very young, but I was around. Um, movie, A Few Good Men, came out. Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson, two very famous actors. Uh, they're in that court scene, Right? And uh, Tom Cruise is getting after it. And he says, and then Jack Nicholson says, you want answers? He said, no, I want the truth. Jack Nicholson said, you can handle the truth. It's my best impression. I'm sorry. I tried it once before. Right? There's some things we're going to talk about this morning that are truth. And I want us to be able to handle it, to do something with it. So let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning, Jesus, Holy Spirit, three in one. We, we desire for you to be present with us. We know that your word says we're two or more gathered in your name. You're there. So we know you're here. But we, wanna, we want you to be a welcome guest. We want you to come like the days of old and, and tabernacle with us. Father, whatever has happened in the past up to this very moment, Lord, that would hinder us from coming into your presence. We know that Jesus has removed all that because of his blood. So it's, it's through the blood of Jesus that we enter in this morning and ask that we might see you in your glory. In Christ's name, amen. Tish Harrison Warren, in the book, Liturgy of the Ordinary, Sacred Practices in Everyday Life, she said this, we have everyday habits, formative practices that constitute daily liturgies. By reaching for my smartphone every morning, I had developed a ritual that trained me toward a certain end. Entertainment and stimulation via technology, regardless of my professed worldview or particular Christian subculture, 
My unexamined daily habit was shaping me. I'll say this. What you reach for shapes you. My unexamined daily habit was shaping me into a worshiper of glowing screens. Examining my daily liturgy as as a liturgy, as something that both revealed and shaped what I love and worship, allowed me to realize that my daily practices were malforming me. Making me less alive, less human, less able to give and to receive love throughout my day. Changing this ritual allowed me to form a new repetitive and contemplative habit that pointed me toward a different way of being in the world. The author of Hebrews said in chapter 12, verse 1, being weighed down, uh, oh no, he didn't say that. (laughs) Those are my notes. Uh, Let us lay aside. Every weight and sin which so easily besets us. That word beset means to threaten persistently. This could be used for good, but would you not agree that this is a persistent threat? I'll prove it. It's fun to write notes, you type them all out, and then you're like, I have so many more thoughts that come in. 2021 study, right? It's not too long ago. The average person, so this is on average, teenagers, probably a lot more. We check this thing 96 times a day. We touch this 2,600 times a day. We unlock it. Iris scanning, thumbprinting, coding it, swiping it. 150 times a day, we unlock it. On average, we spend 5.4 hours a day. Right here. Do you check in with God 96 times a day? Do you reach out to touch the Lord 2,617 times a day? Do you seek to unlock the power of God, gain access to his throne room 150 times a day? You spend 5.4 hours with him? I don't. I don't. Not even close. Okay. 1,500. In 1,500, the the phrase was coined, at least for my research. You could prove me wrong, but I don't really care. (laughs) (laughs) The statement was made, practice makes what? Or rather, the statement was actually, uh, more accurately put, was use makes perfect. Okay. Okay. How many of you believe that to be true? Practice makes perfect or practice makes better. Would you agree with that? Yeah, we'll go there. Perfect. That's a scary word. 2018, James Clear, New York bestselling author of Atomic Habits. I don't know if he's Christian or not. He said this. All things come from small beginnings. The seed of every habit is a single tiny decision. But as the decision is repeated... A habit sprouts and grows. <laughs> and grows stronger. Roots entrench themselves and branches grow. The task of breaking a bad habit is like uprooting a powerful oak. You ever try to do that? I haven't. Ever try to just push an oak tree down? You ain't doing it. Wouldn't be prudent. And the task 
On the opposite side, the task of building a good habit <laughs> is like cultivating a delicate little beautiful flower. That's a lot easier, isn't it? <laughs> than removing an oak tree. 1980, the author of the message, whether you like that translation or Bible or whatever, it does, it's irrelevant to me. But he wrote a book uh, called A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. 1980, Discipleship in an Instant Society. <laughs> that was before I was born. I wasn't born for that one. He said this, there is a great market for religious experience in our world. There is little enthusiasm for the patient acquisition of virtue. Little inclination to sign up for a long apprenticeship, as Pastor Rich talked about, we're launching here, in what earlier generations of Christians called holiness. According to some studies, Gallup and Barna and Pew, Pew Research, three in four Americans ascribe to being religious or ascribe to some kind of faith. So three out of four people you meet, they're probably religious. Interestingly enough, 69% of them would ascribe to being a Christian, adult Americans. Cool. This is what research says polling people, talking to people. In December, so just this last month, Barna did a year in review of the year 2022. They had their 10 top topics that, of things that just ongoingly were coming up. Do you know that one of, the, one of the 10 was discipleship? Pastor Rich talked about it. Evangelism, discipleship, uh, apprenticeship, sharing your faith, walking after the Lord, doing things. Only two in five are actually in a discipleship relationship. That's 40%. That's not 69%. So those 69% saying I'm a Christian, only 40% are actually doing something, whether they're being discipled, they're being poured into, but also they're pouring into someone else. They're not just getting to receive, they're giving to give. Ready? We're going to drill it down even further. This is so fun. Welcome to church. In reality, <clears throat> all right, let me, Barna said this, the, the, the term Christian has become somewhat of a generic term rather than a name that reflects a deep commitment to passionately pursuing and being like Jesus. Despite 69% claiming the faith, in reality, only a tiny major, majority of American adults, 9%, 9% possess a biblical worldview and not just possess something intellectually, but demonstrate a consistent understanding and application of its truth. So now we've whittled that seven, nearly 70% down to less, it's closer to 6%, to about 6% of people. So when I was on, on campus uh, as, a, as a missionary to the local campuses here for the last four years with, uh, with InterVarsity, when I would do some evangelism, one of the questions I would ask is, hey, tell me about your spiritual background. What's your spiritual faith? Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist. Sometimes I would run across a Christian. Now, I know the stats. So I don't just, someone goes, I'm a Christian, go, oh, awesome, let's go reach the campus. This campus is gonna turn over to Jesus. Well, probably not. Because I know less than 9% of people who say I'm a Christian actually seek to live it out. So my follow-up question would be is, hey, tell me about that. What do you mean by that? What does it look like to be a Christian? Jesus? Who is he? Who, if someone said, hey, who is Jesus to you, what would you say? Once I hear them, because I know the book. I don't know it perfectly, but I know it pretty well. You start talking... I don't know if you're a follower or not. Because to be Christian is not to be a follower. It's not equal. Those terms are not equal. You can say Christian and not be a follower. You can be a follower and be a Christian. Isn't this so, so like energetic and helpful? So according to the stats, do we Christians 
by and large, believe that practice makes perfect? Do we actually engage in the doing? Nah. And people are going, why is America, blah, 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 going this way and going that way? Because we're not doing anything. You're just talking a bunch of talk. You got to do something. As Pastor Rich said, one of Jesus' followers, it might have been even one of his brothers, James said that we are not to be hearers only, but doers what? Also. Where did he get that? From Jesus. Go into the Gospels. Jesus said, hey, your disciples were like, hey, your mother and brothers and people are out here waiting on you. He goes, Jesus said, my family, my mothers and brothers are those that hear the word and put it into practice. That's my family. So here's Timothy. If you have your Bibles here, go to Timothy. <clears throat> Paul to his protege, right? One of his disciples, one of his apprentices. He said this in 1 Timothy 4, starting in verse 7. He said, refuse profane and foolish myths. Instead, what? Exercise. Practice. In the ways of godliness. You're not going to be godly by just saying yes to Jesus when you finally realize what he did for you on the cross. That's not going to make you a spiritual person. Spiritual person is a someone who says yes to Jesus and goes out and pursues godliness, in holiness, in righteousness. That's what Paul is talking about. He said, for bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable in all things. You're not going to do a spiritual exercise and it profit you nothing. It's going to be profitable in everything you do. Interestingly enough, Paul says, holding promise for the present life and also for the life to come. So your preparation is, your, your discipleship, your thing right now is not just for right now, it's for when? Later in the, in the, in the time that Jesus finally sets this thing up and we're just living life all together. But it's all determined about what you do then. And now. That word exercise here is actually where we, the, the Greek word, and I'm not even going to attempt it, but it's where we get our English word gym or gymnasium. Most people know what you do in a gym. You exercise, you do stuff, right? Gym class isn't like gym class used to be, but so I can't really go there, right? But you, you do stuff. This is where I want to see, I want to see the opposite of this, this, this word, so Paul says, exercise yourself to godliness. What, what does Peter say? Go to Peter, 2 Peter 2, verse 14. 2 Peter 2, 14. Peter in his second letter writes about people who will leave. This is, this is the context. He's talking about people who will leave the way of truth and follow after destructive ways. This is the context. 2 Peter 2.14 says this, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and a heart they have exercised with covetous. Same word that Paul said. So there's some people exercising towards covetousness and ungodliness Covetous where it is, covetous practices. Cursed children which have forsaken the right way. What are you touching? I don't have time. You know, Pastor Rich put up a bunch of things this coming year that they're going to do. Well, I don't have time. Bull crap. I'll just acronym it, BS. That's what it is. Because statistically, I know on average, we have five point whatever day, times a day that you're on this stinking thing. I've been with college students. I did college ministry. And we have time. Bro, you go to class at noon. 
and you got a break, and you got this and that, and you got, no, you got responsibilities, but you don't have a job. You don't have kids. Right? We have time. So what practices are you dedicating yourself to? Are you doing practices that actually form you and shape you into the image of Jesus? Or are you engaging in practices? Not all of this is sin, but as I think Hebrew says, it's, it's a weight. What do weights do? They weigh you down, they slow you up. It could be distracting, right? You have to not get untethered from this thing so I can actually go do something now. So according to scripture, both Paul and Peter inform us that there are spiritual exercises or spiritual practices that will either lead us in the way of a profitable life or to a life of desire toward things that will distract and destroy us right now and in, in the ages to come. I mean, I know there's a lot of doom and gloom. You just, I mean, geez, can I just pull this thing out? But it's really not that hard, right? Follow Jesus. Do things. Form habits. That woman about the liturgy of the ordinary, I missed this. So what is a litur- what's an example of the liturgy of the, of the ordinary, everyday life? Uh, my, my father-in-law influenced me uh, to be a coffee drinker. <clears throat> I didn't drink before coffee. Um, uh, I, I didn't drink coffee before, but now I love it. And it's got to be whole bean. I got to grind it. Don't give me that already ground stuff. Anathema. Um, um, so I, I, I make my coffee. Well, how, how, can I, how can I make that? How can I make coffee a spiritual practice? Okay. Lord, as I put this water into this pot, would you fill me up today? Would your spirit run through the filter of my, my heart and transform me into something way better to drink? Would my, would, would my, would I, would my life be enjoyable in receiving this cup? Lord, as good as this cup tastes, would my life be like that to someone else? Would they be desiring to drink of my life because of who you are and how you filled me? And Lord, would you help me empty this cup? This is going to be a good cup. I'm hoping it is. But would, would you help empty me of, of this thing? That's coffee. How many of you do that every day? I do. Multiple times a day. <laughs> it's a habit. Addictive. Um, uh, Addie today, my, my, my youngest, uh, we're getting, I'm getting ready and I'm saying, hey, you know, you know what this is? Like, I don't dress up all the time. I really don't like dressing up, but that's me. Uh, you know what this is? Like, no, like a tie. It's a tie. Like, you know what? It's a sweater. And, and she's going around. And I said, what do you like? And she's like pointing off stuff. And she goes, and she points to these, my, my shoes. And she goes, and them's your tap shoes. <laughs> I'm like, that's hilarious. I start, I have a little coughing, so I start hacking because um, I'm laughing so hard. But like, even in that, thank you, Jesus, for for my daughter, bringing joy into my life. Man, how much more would we be aware of God's movement if we were doing stuff like that? Because here's the thing, we start going through life and the busyness just hits it. I mean, I, I, I want to get out of this and hopefully 2023 I will. This is my alarm. It, it, it's, it takes place, of a, and that's good. It, it replaces a lot of things, but it also like, Pulls you in. Here I go running out of time again. Wade last week, he used this concept of the will, right? And he he talked a lot about verses that say, let us, let us, let us, let us. That means you have to allow it. God is not going to force you to do anything. Did you know that? He's very kind for as much bad rap as he gets. He's very kind. He's a gentleman. P- 
Paul says this in, in Galatians. If we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. You have to choose it. And so you have to have some practices in your life, spiritual formative practices that form you. If not, something is going to form you. Do you, do you really want this to form you? I'm saying that to myself too when I, when I get all animated. That's my inner critic. Like, do you, do you, what do you want? Do you want the good life? Didn't say easy. Even though Jesus says my yoke is easy. It's a good life though. What is it they say of, of, uh, in the Chronicles of Narnia? Right? Aslan, he's a lion. You know, is he, is he safe? <laughs> no, he's a lion, but he's good. He's good. And that's Jesus. He's good. Life with Jesus wasn't safe. Go read the gospels. They're getting stoned, beat up, threatened their lives. They're not safe with Jesus. Let's go, I want to show you one practice, and I'm, I'm going to, hopefully they'll welcome me back to preach again, but and we'll, we'll do something else, but I want to prove my point. Go to Mark 9, chapter, chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, verse 14. I got to get there too. Mark 9. Mark 9, here we go. Uh, when, he, when he, Jesus, came to his other disciples, he saw a great crowd around them. Oh, my, I said 14, 14. And the scribes were disputing with them. Immediately, when all the people saw him, they were greatly amazed and running to him, greeting, greeted him. And, and he asked the scribes, what are you debating about? I'm debating with them. One of the crowd answered, teacher, uh, I brought your son who was uh, a mute or has a mute spirit. And whenever it takes hold on him, it dashes him to the ground and foams at the mouth and gnashes with his teeth and becomes rigid. And, and I told your disciples so that they would cast it out, but they could what? Could not. Dang it. He answered, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Bring him to me. So they brought the boy to him, and when they saw him, immediately the spirit dashed him, and he fell to the ground and wallowed, foaming all at the mouth. He asked his father, how long has this been uh, since it came to him? Like, how long has he had this thing? From childhood. Man, that stinks. Often it has thrown him into the fire and the water to kill him. <laughs> Talk about micro, like helicopter parenting. How would you like to do that? Always be watching on, I mean, I mean being funny, but also be like, imagine your kid always going after dangerous things that are going to kill him, and you've got to be on, on alert for that? That would not be fun. Scary. He said, often it's, it, it, uh, it's thrown him in the fire and in the, in the, in the water to kill him, but he said, but, you, but if you can do anything, <laughs> Jesus, but if you can do anything, well, let's see what you can do. Uh, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said, if you can believe, <laughs> if you can do anything, and then Jesus says, well, if you can believe... <laughs> I need you to do something. If you can believe all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out with tears, Lord, I believe. <laughs> this is where I'm at a lot. Help my unbelief. Isn't that, that's honest. He's honest. Like, I believe, but I kind of have some doubt. <laughs> Help my unbelief, please, Jesus. When Jesus saw the, the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying to it, you mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Spirit cried and convulsed him greatly, but it came out and he was as dead. So that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he rose. When he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? He said to them, this guy cannot come out except by what? Prayer and fasting. Question. Was it that they couldn't do it? Was it that they couldn't do it? No. They hadn't what put in the what? 
They didn't put in the practice. They didn't put in the preparation. If they had been fasting, if they had been praying, they too would have had the same power as Jesus. Not because of anything of them, but because they were praying and wanting the Lord to fill them up and empower them to do a work. That's the same God we serve. That's the same Holy Spirit who fills us. Do you believe? Do you have practices that help you connect with the Lord and fill you with power? I know they did this, and I know it worked when Jesus left. Acts 8 says this. Acts 8, 5. Philip went to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the miracles which he did, they listened in unity to what he said. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed. And many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And I'm... I'm not going to try to get into theology of the truth. Of, Does that really happen today? Mm. We don't believe it. Only 9% of us even believe this thing's true. How, how, how are you going to do anything you don't believe? How are you going to follow after something you don't believe? How are you going to become like Jesus if you're not in this thing, this book, this sacred text? So practice, right? Jesus said, you, you, they said, why couldn't we do it? Did you pray? Nope. Okay, so you did it in whose power? Your own? That has no power. Fasting, why would you do that? To yield your body to make your body come into subjection. Knowing that, meh, <laughs> apart from Jesus, you're pretty weak. You do those things. Hmm. Maybe if you come against some opposition and some evil, maybe you two could do the same thing. But it's, it's simple though, right? It's not spooky or mystical. It's practice. 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 Dallas Willard said this, grace, and I think this is a misunderstanding. The word grace is such a flippant word these days. Dallas Willard said this. He's been in ministry for over 40 years. He said, grace isn't opposed to effort. It's opposed to earning. It's different. It takes nothing. There is no, there is no earning this what Jesus did, what he offers because of it. You cannot earn it. But if you're going to follow Jesus, <laughs> you're going to have to do something. You want to be like Jesus? You're going to have to do something. You don't just exercise yourself, as Paul said to Timothy, to godliness by scrolling this thing aimlessly. You can't. You can't. So what are some practices? And this is very cursory, right? This is not exhaustive. Prayer, fasting, community, small groups, being hospitable, opening up your home, Sabbath. I really believe that's still a thing for us today. We're so stinking busy. I ain't got time. Make time for the Lord. If you don't stop, I'm going to say, and I believe the Bible would support it, that's idolatry. We worry about the pagans of the past. Man, we, we're pagans today. That's idolatry to think that you have to be always on, on, on call. Oh, if I don't answer, you know, ooh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen with that person? God's, does God got it or not? What are we saying about God? Communion, worshiping through singing, teaching, engaging with scripture, serving, simple living. Yes, simple living. Minimalism. Not stuff. 
This does not help with that. Celebration, grieving, confession, solitude and silence and gratitude. And that's, it's not exhaustive, but those are some practices. If you're not doing something like that, you've, you've got you've to do that. I, I forgot. Come here, bud. Totally forgot. You do, your th- do your thing. Do your thing. Do it, do it. Hurry, quick. Come on. You got it. Just don't get hurt. Go ahead. <clears throat> oh, that's okay. So, we wanted to flip off earlier, but I was like, eh, probably not. Not the best. He can, he, can, he can do a lot better than that. He can actually land on his feet without his hands. What is that, a back handspring? Is that what you call it? Okay. How did, you, how, did you, how did you get to be able to do flips and all kinds of stuff? Watching videos and then so, trying it. So watching videos, doing research, and then, and then what? Trying. Trying it. And now because you've done it, because you've practiced, it's increased your capacity, and now you can do what other kinds of things? Um, Loud so they can hear you. Speaking in my microphone. <laughs> what other things? Just give me two. Two? Yeah. Or I'm going to make something up. <laughs> Gainers. Yeah, I can do whatever, whatever that is. Google it. Okay, Google. Um, um, a back half. A back half. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Love you. <laughs> so I'm going to have now Mr. Palmer come up, and I'm going to have him do the same thing. <laughs> and he can't. He's got some things going for him, but... That preventing him, but I guarantee you he's not practiced. Maybe you do him. Okay, all right. It's still work. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're funny. You're funny. Oh, Jesus, you're funny. Um, yeah, so the, the way my son was able to do that and, and have the capacity is he just did some research and then he went out and what? Practice. He did it. Like, you can't. Doing spiritual practices get you ready for the game, game of life. We are in it every day. If you're not practicing, how are you going to be ready against the opponent? When you're, and I'm not saying this is totally bad, but again, this is what he uses, and he uses other things. He uses devices. But if you're engaging in the thing that he runs his game, this isn't Jesus' playbook. That's his playbook. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, loving God, you know the deep inner patterns of our lives that keep us from being totally yours. You know the misinformed structures or misformed structures of of our being, Lord structures that we are beholden to and we're in bondage to, to something less than your purpose for our lives. You also know our reluctance to let you have your way with us in these areas. As, as Mr. Palmer jokingly was talking about, Lord, trying to cross off fasting, wouldn't we do it, Lord? But honestly, Lord, would you hear the deep cries of our hearts for the wholeness that we, we, we long to have in Jesus? And by your grace, yes, your grace, would we receive that grace, but also would we put in some practice that would enable us to be open to your transforming power and presence every day? Come, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, go before us and behind us. We ask this in the name of Jesus. stand up and we'll just uh, we'll take a moment here to worship Jesus sing this with us here I am to worship
Is he wonderful to you? Can you say that he's your God? Amen. I encourage you this week, take that truth with you all throughout the week. He's wonderful to me. And he's my God. Amen. Appreciate our worship team and appreciate the passion of Robbie Halleck in the message that he gave us today. Let's pray. Lord, we are here to worship you. Thank you for every part of this service today from start to finish and the impact it's had on our hearts for you. Lord, we know there's going to be days in our life where it's going to rain, where it's going to shine. There's going to be days where we're going to be on the mountaintop or down in the valley. Help us to remember you are still wonderful and you are still our God. And we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week.